Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are now calling for Dr. Hanan Morsi to begin the first talk about the first presentation in our 15th annual scientific conference meeting for Alexandria Radiology Conference. Fadali Dr. Hanan. Good morning, dear professors and colleagues. I would like to present a brief paper review of viral encephalitis in both viral acute encephalopathy in pediatric population. Encephalitis is inflammation of the brain brinkma leading to neurological alteration. Infections or autoimmune diseases are considered the most common causes of which viral infection is most common and viral encephalitis can be classified into either primary or secondary. Clinical symptoms ranging from mild symptoms as fever, headache, and confusion to more severe symptoms up to coma. Viral infection must induce inflammation and damage to the brain to cause encephalitis, and virus mostly reaches the brain parenchyma by disrupting the blood-brain barrier. Diagnosis depends on CSF sampling finding, EEG finding, MRI characteristic patterns and the specific determination of the pathogen by PCR, reverse transcription PCR, routine immunological essay. Neuroimaging, the rule of neuroimaging of encephalitis include, first, supports the diagnosis of encephalitis by demonstration of abnormal hyperintense lesions on T2 and the flare or diffusion, and enhancing lesion when blood-brain barrier is disrupted. Susceptibility with the image also provides identification of hemorrhagic lesions. Second, to point to specific etiology, the pattern of MRI abnormalities may suggest a specific virus. And lastly, the differential diagnosis of acute neurological dysfunction, including ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke, press, tumors, or anoxic injury. The pattern of MRI abnormalities of acute viral encephalitis can be classified into different groups as predominant temporal loop affection or predominant gray matter, white matter, rhombencephalitis, or cerebellitis. Predominant temporal loop affection um, uh, most commonly occurred with hypersampling virus in, other, in um, uh, children with hypersampling virus 1 encephalitis with bilateral affection of the medial temporal loop, cortical and subcortical swelling, diffusion restriction, and the uh, affection is typically asymmetric. Other regional affection include parahippocampal gyri and inferior frontal region. Diffusion-weighted image and more conspicuous uh, findings in the affection of uh, encephalitis for determination of the encephalitic patches. And the second type of herpes simplex is herpes virus 2, and these occur as a neonatal infection, transmission through transplacental route, and there is more affection on diffusion weighted image as the frontal and parietal regions. Herpes simplex encephalitis, including bitemporal affection, diffusion restriction, and low EDC values. MR spectroscopy shows inverted lactate doublet and increased choline, creatine, and choline NA ratio. An important differential diagnosis of temporal lobe herpes encephalitis is autoimmune limbic encephalitis with bilateral symmetric temporal lobe involvement. Predominant gray matter affection occur in Japanese encephalitis, bisalamic affection, and there is no or non significant post contrast enhancement. Also, with Nile virus encephalitis, beside affection of the deep subcortical gray matter, there is predilection for the spinal cord gray matter affection and mainly anterior horn affection. Dengue virus encephalitis. Dengue virus are any virus producing dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, or dengue shock syndrome. And there is hemorrhagic, um, hemorrhagic uh, lesion at the um, uh, internal capsule on the left side also extending to the basal ganglia and salamus, and additional lesion is the posterior parieto occipital region. The lesion is restricted in diffusion and shows uh, a foci of hemorrhage on SWI. Other sites of affection may include temporal loop affection with diffusion restriction and non-significant contrast enhancement. <laughs> 
Rabies encephalitis, the whole mark of rabies is the affection of the gray matter in the brain and spinal cord. Affection is the basal ganglia, salami, brain stem, as well as affection of the whole cord with involvement of the central gray matter and the characteristic spearing of the peripheral white matter. Swine influenza H1N1 infection also includes bilateral salamic affection, periorandic uh, encephalitic patches with diffusion restriction and uh, focal leptomeningeal enhancement and subcortical enhancement, a small focus of blooming in OSWI representing hemorrhagic focus. Predominant white matter affection of viral encephalitis is in varicella zoster virus infection. Virus infection of varicella is decreased by the introduction of vaccination. However, infection producing by salamic affection and the patchy deep white matter affection restricted on diffusion and it may be hemorrhagic. Varicella zoster virus may, inc may induce vasculopathy by the transmission through the trigeminal ganglion into transaxonal to infect the vascular adventitia. And in this case, with the left anterior basal ganglia affection head of codate and anterior butamen, ischemic lesion, and the time of right MRA shows localized focal stenosis uh, at the M1 segment of left MCA. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a presentation of John Cunningham virus infection, which infect mainly myelin producing oligodendrocytes to develop multifocal subcortical white matter lesions. The lesions are more defined towards the cortex and less defined deeply, and the characteristic U fiber involvement with little or no mass effect characterized PML. White matter abnormalities may be transient as affection of the spleen of corpus callosum in influenza virus, epstein bar virus, and rotavirus infection. And other differential diagnosis of reversible spinal, cord, uh, spinal uh, splenial lesion should include hypoglycemia, drug toxicity, or seizures. Human pericovirus encephalitis, characteristic involvement of the fibers of the corpus callosum, deep and subcortical white matter fibers, the risk seizures and the restricted diffusion uh, on diffusion weighted imaging, which is more sensitive in depicting lesions in T2 and FLIR. Viral cerebellitis. Rotavirus is the commonest cause of viral cerebellitis. It may range from transient splenial lesion to acute encephalitic patches as cerebellar white matter and middle cerebellar peduncles, restricted on diffusion weighted images with low EDC values, and later on the patient developed uh, cerebellar atrophy. Viral rhombencephalitis. Rhombencephalitis occurs by enteroviruses, which produce acute or severe gastroenteritis in children, and then encephalopathy with affection of posterior medulla and restricted diffusion on diffusion weighted image ADC map. Multifocal affection may be included in viral encephalitis. This example of cytomegalovirus encephalitis with multiple lesions at the genio of corpus callosum and the small foci at the cerebellar white matter. And the presentation of uh, cytomegalovirus is early, and the earlier the presentation, the more grave is the finding. It's the most common cause of congenital infection in neonates. Hearing loss and delayed development is a high risk factor, and uh, associated uh, blooming foci on SWI representing periventricular microcalcifications. Prolonged cytomegalovirus encephalitis may develop microcephaly, ventricular megaly, white matter volume loss due to demyelination, periventricular cyst, and calcification is common. Viral encephalitis may run a more chronic course, as in Rasmussen encephalitis. The exact etiology is still unknown, but viral infection play a role. Early there is unremarkable MRI findings, and later there is cortical and subcortical white matter lesions, mostly unilateral. There may be affection of the basal ganglia as uh, affection of the posterior thalamus, and uh, uh, there is no post contrast, no significant post contrast enhancement, and later the patient developed cortical atrophy. HIV infection, the whole mark of HIV encephalopathy or encephalitis is volume loss with widening of the cortical cerci and ventricular widening, reduced gray matter and white matter volume, especially as the medial frontal gyli. In more severe cases, there is bilateral symmetric patchy white matter lesion at the deep and uh, subcortical white matter.
in, uh, in, in young children with high viral loads, they may be bilateral symmetric basal ganglia calcification as demonstrated as hyperdense lesion on CT. And this finding is rare in others. Subacute sclerosing band encephalitis is a rare post infectious progressive form of encephalitis as a late sequel of early measles infection. The hallmark is neuronal degeneration or loss, demyelation, and so the pathological findings. Uh, in the progress of the disease developed the bilateral patchy asymmetric hyperintense patches at the white matter of both cerebral hemispheres. Diffusion tensor imaging uh, help in st st studying the disease progression and in assessing the therapeutic response. Usually there is abnormal diffusion tensor imaging parameters including decreased FA value and increased MD value even in normal appearing white matter on conventional MRI. MR spectroscopy shows decreased NAE peak due to neuronal loss and prominent increase of myonistol due to gliosis. Voxel-based morphometry shows gray matter volume reduction in the frontotemporal cortex of these patients even with normal appearing MRI on conventional imaging. Lastly, acute encephalopathy associated with viral infection is a systemic syndrome leading to acute brain dysfunction preceded by infection. The main symptoms, impaired consciousness and signs of increased intracranial pressure accompanied by seizures. Its end is enhanced in infancy and early childhood, and antecedent infection, especially viral, is a major cause. There is no specific correlation between the virus pathogen and encephalopathic syndrome, so any virus may cause any type of encephalopathy. And the pathologic substrate of acute encephalopathy is diffuse or widespread non-inflammatory brain edema that may be pathogenic or cytotoxic. Three major categories can be uh, encountered in this syndrome. First, uh, due to metabolic derangement. Second, due to cytokine storm and uh, diffuse generalized brain edema. And lastly, excitotoxicity with more localized or robust cerebral cortical edema. Acute encephalopathy due to metabolic derangement is in classic Roy syndrome. There is inflammatory cytokine increased in the blood, triggered by viral infection and uh, toxins or drugs, impairing hepatic mitochondrial function, diagnostic criteria clinically by hepatic cell damage, and marked increase in the serum amino transferases, and various aspects of mitochondrial dysfunction leading to hyperammonemia, gluconeogenesis, and free fatty acidemia. The whole mark in cranial CT and MRI is diffuse brain edema, and onset is usually during convalescence after uh, viruses as influenza, chickenpox, and other viral infection and uh, um, risk factors of drugs is salicylase and valproic acid. Acute encephalopathy due to a cytokine storm, viral infection is influenza and other viruses, induced systemic inflammatory response syndrome with increase in inflammatory mediators in the CSF and serum is interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, and this leads to vascular inducer injury and apoptosis of parenchymal cells with resulting brain edema, encephalopathy, multi-organ dysfunction, and DIC. Three clinical syndromes are included, Ray-like syndrome, hemorrhagic shock, and encephalopathy syndrome, acute necrotizing encephalopathy. In Ray syndrome, there is acute encephalopathy with severe liver damage, CT and MRI showing bilateral diffuse cerebral cortical and subcortical edema. In hemorrhagic shock encephalopathy syndrome, there is DIC, shock, fever, hepatic and renal dysfunction, and CT may present hemorrhagic lesion cortical and subcortical as these hyperdense lesions on uh, initial CT. Acute necrotizing encephalopathy, there is diffuse brain edema with multiple lesions of edematous necrosis, mainly affecting bilateral ceramic region, deep white matter and cerebellar white matter. As these examples of reported cases of acute necrotizing encephalopathy in infants with COVID-19, initially at the admission, there is a bilateral basal ganglia and thalamic uh, ischemic necrosis, as demonstrated in T2 and diffusion-weighted image. And after the administration of antiviral intravenous therapy and the pulse therapy uh, and the intravenous immunoglobulins, there is reduction in the size of the lesion with improvement clinically of the patient. Lastly, excitotoxicity, which is called acute encephalopathy with febrile convulsive status epilepticus. Viral infection with increase in the serum and CSF cytokine level 
leading to both interstitial damage and fever. Fever leading to status epilepticus with excess glutamate release, which in turn lead to glial damage, delayed apoptosis, and neuronal death. Inducial damage with cerebrovascular dysfunction also lead to brain edema and hypoxia, hypoxia or ischemia. And the hallmark in imaging is lobar or unilateral cerebral affection. Two clinical syndromes are encountered, acute infantile encephalopathy affecting mainly the frontal lobes and hemiconvulsion hemiplegia syndrome affecting unilateral cerebral hemisphere. Other names of this syndrome is acute encephalopathy with prolonged febrile seizures and late reduced diffusion, or encephalopathy with biphasic clinical course. Diffusion-weighted image is more sensitive in depicting lesions, as in this case with bilateral cortical and subcortical frontal and parietal affection with characteristic sparing of the periorandic region. In acute infantile encephalopathy affecting frontal lobes, First, in the acute stage, there is affection of the frontal cortical and subcortical lesion by swelling as faint T2, hyperintense lesions, and ill definition of the gray white matter junction. Later in the subacute stage, there is reduction of the volume, and SPECT imaging shows bifrontal hypoperfusion. In hemoconvulsion hemiplegia syndrome, CT first may show no abnormality, and later in the subacute stage, there is cortical edema involving the entire cerebral hemisphere on one side and later the patient developed unilateral cerebral atrophy. Thank you.